Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Silent Night on KD&D, and that was Dadheim Steamroller off the record Christmas Bangers and Mash, which is just a great live album, one of my favorites, really. Interesting story about the recording of that track, which happened during a battle of the bands outside of Waterdeep. Supposedly, the crowd loved that song so much that opposing guitarist Glenn Close stole Dadheim Steamroller drummer Daryl Wilson's minivan and just fled the scene with his son Nick Close which means we'll never know what they were going to play. But in the end, we got an all-time classic and a very unique vocal performance from lead vocalist Ron Stampler. If you ask me, I'd say it was well worth it. KD&D, the weather coming at you at the top of the hour. But first, I have one more for you before I sign off. This is All Right by Max Waller. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, it's kind of a BDSM podcast, <laughs> about four dads from our world flung into the Forgotten Realms in the quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong, and I play rock cover band dad and bard, Glenn Close. And my dad fact this week is this, because uh, we were trying to figure out what the heck the Glenn Close trio plays, mm-hmm. and I finally figured it out. How is Glenn a touring musician all over the place? Been around the world, and also not really that famous. The Glenn Close Trio plays jazz fusion Christmas music. Oh my god! Like a certain steamroller by the yeah. name of Mannheim, and they do weddings in the off season. And when I say they played Bonnaroo, no joke, this year at Bonnaroo, <laughs> there's going to be a Christmas tent where they're going to play Christmas music. So that's, that's like where they could have done it. That's so wow. wholesome. I love it. And so then. Ron singing Silent Night is such a betrayal <laughs> of, of Glenn's musical Spit thing. in the face of Christmas oh, you cheer. Just took it, he had one thing you took it from him. Exactly. Oh, so that's that's my dad fact this week. I, does that mean that Glenn was never home for Christmas for Nick? Oh, shit. Oh. Yeah, it was always presence in absentia. That's Dang. brutal. That's wow. brutal. That's heavy duty. Yeah. Well, I just always gave your son a, a Christmas album. With a joint in well, it. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was like, it was like <laughs> album and then it was just like, here's the new drugs. <laughs> Man. The new drugs. Trying to be a, a cool dad. Yeah. stuffer for you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matthew Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad who's a barbarian in the world of Forgotten Realms, I guess. Um, <laughs> little dad fact about Daryl Wilson. So last year, he had his 15 minutes of fame at, uh, oh. at one of Carol's employee or worker events. All the women at the work were giggling and kind of pointing at him and laughing, and he was oh, wondering no. what's going on. And he found out he was on the hot Instagram account called Dilfs of Disneyland. What? <laughs> what? Yes! Holy Is that a shit? thing? It's a real thing. Oh, my God. It's oh a thing. He was so bad. excited. He could not stop bragging about it. But I, as I said, it was 15 minutes of fame because then he found out that he was just in the background of one of the photos. Oh, <laughs> and they were all they were all laughing at him because they were oh saying that gosh. dad is a little fat. Oh. Wow. <laughs> No, you'll always be a Dilf to me. This story yeah, this- took so many turns. <laughs> How long did it take you to come up with that? That was a three <laughs> act fucking it's a story. Real thing. We, it's a real we were, thing. I, I, I was with my wife. She brought up Dilfs of Disneyland. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I was like, oh, yeah, clearly Daryl, like Daryl's a Dilf, but not really a Dilf. And then I was like, oh, Dilf, dad is a little fat. I was like, yeah, that's probably what happened. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's it's really an acronym. Oh, my God. Oh yeah, my yeah. God. yeah that, all, the, all the women at the work were actually like, huh, your husband is a dad who's a little fat. He's just in the background of this photo. <laughs> but here's the thing like, dad bods are. The fucking dad deep lore. So it's like if you're one dilf, aren't you inherently both? Yeah, her, a the, dilf is a dilf, you might say. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because at first I was like, oh yeah, Daryl would belong there. But then I looked at that Instagram account. It's like everybody's a bodybuilder. Oh, in that yeah. Instagram account. It's like if you ever want to feel like really wholesome, but really like thirsty, hot as hell. <laughs> like yeah, that's where you yeah. go. It's wholesome pics of buff dads of holding buff little dads. kids with their kids. Yeah, just I, I cannot boys. believe that both of those acronyms mean the same thing. <laughs> that's the cruelest thing I've ever heard in my life. Uh, what's up, everyone? I'm Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, uh, granola munching, nature loving, Birkenstock rocking, uh, hippie druid dad, and uh, that's my thing. That's my whole <laughs> my whole get up. This week's fun fact for Henry 
uh, is, well, you know, I told you guys last week that his favorite drink is a cold glass of water. <laughs> water. Yep. <laughs> I'll never forget. Henry's second favorite drink. Oh, man. Room temperature glass of water. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, like, worst case scenario, if the glass warms hey, up, man, hey, it's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. <laughs> Doing fine. I, I think Henry Oak is probably has is living the best life out of all of us. I think it's very clear at home. You know, he really believes in hydration. I'll say that. <laughs> Henry Oak is the most functional human being amongst you, I think. <laughs> oh, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. My Ron name. is. And now for the least <laughs> functional human being. <laughs> My name is Beth May. I'm not functional. I play Ron Stampler, emotionally stunted stepfather and rogue. Fun fact about Ron, his middle name is F. <laughs> it's it's the letter it's the just, letter F. Just the just letter Ron F. Ron F. Stampler. Yeah, I think I probably what happened was he saw you know R Ronald F. Stampler written somewhere like on a birth certificate or something or mm -hmm. a, like you know some sort of document and then just never really concluded that there mi it might stand for something did, did and it not, probably doesn't. Does Ron not know his parents? Did he never ask his parents what? I mean, means? he definitely knows his parents, and I think that's why he didn't ask. Oh, <laughs> fuck. That's dark. Whoa. That's really oh, dark. Oh, that's some heavy-duty <laughs> stuff. All right. Uh, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm your daddy master. Um, some people have talked about this podcast and been like, oh, cool, I'm not really into Dungeons and Dragons, but I like this podcast. If you like this podcast, you're not into Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> that's not what we do. You're but, posers. <laughs> <laughs> this, we just, this is just uh, people just jerking off in a room and recording it. <laughs> but if you want to get into role-playing stuff, and D&D &D sounds a little bit uh, intimidating, uh, I would look up the one-page RPGs by Grant Howitt on Google. Uh, there are a bunch of free ones. The Witch's Dead is my favorite. That's what I would recommend if you want to play something quick and easy with your friends. But yeah, let's pretend to be wizards. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Paint us a picture, Daddy Master. Nick Close and his father, Glenn, are speeding along in the Honda Odyssey toward the big old city of Waterdeep. What are you feeling right now? What are you doing right now, Glenn? Um, I think I'm trying to, I'm, I'm driving and I'm trying to keep the thing on the road because we are not in paved road territory. And I think I'm a little bit conflicted. Honestly, because on one hand, I finally found my son. We're, we're, we're hanging out and, and we're just having a good time. And on the other hand, I do feel a little bit guilty about leaving the rest of the dads behind. So I'm going to I'm going to talk to him and be like, hey, Nick, um, Red Brands are, well, I guess they won the Battle of the Bands, huh? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. They're, they're okay, right? The other guys, they're going to be fine, right? Uh, you, your friends? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they pretended to be Red Brand, so I think if anybody's going to be safe, it's going to be them. I think the water mice, like, half of them might end up getting kind of a little slaughtered, but, like, your <laughs> shitty friends should be fine. <laughs> Dang, that's pretty... <laughs> That's pretty harsh, man. How well, I mean, that's what they did by deciding to do the greatest rendition of Silent <laughs> Night that any human being has ever listened to. That was on them. That's a good point, man. Yeah. Forget about them. Yeah. This is about this is the this is the the Ron and Nick show now. Hey, so the Ron and Nick? Wait. Yeah, what's it's my... it's what <laughs> Oh shit. I'm ready for the show. Oh, they sorry. want an encore, Fuck. everybody. They want me back on stage. I take it back. That fucking crazy ass vocalist got in my head so hard. A good performance stays with you. <laughs> it's just like echoing around. Like, Where's that coming? What from? is that? Sorry. This is the Glenn and Nick show. And I think your idea that you had of like flipping this shit, like I still have a bunch of those yeah, drugs yeah, yeah. in the back I, I seat. I noticed when you were, uh, when we were making those bundles, I noticed you were, uh, 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 what's the Sequestering a few what's away. The, what's the cool, it, Will, what's the cool drug What are you for? looking at me for? I'm just saying, uh, what's <laughs> the Will, cool? the druggiest drug doer of all of us. Was it chiefin? What is it when you like hog a joint? I, you keistered it. Keister. I know that, well, is it, <laughs> what? might not be the right word. Yeah. In this That's, that, means, that means something <laughs> else. Don't, right. don't tell him. I was trying to lead him down the primrose path. You Birkenstock it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Birkenstock it. <laughs> I Birkenstocked up. On, I noticed you were Birkenstocking up on those uh, joints. I, I may have man. had a feeling we were going to be able to get away in a sort of situation not entirely dissimilar from what we got going on right now. Uh, but I think I <laughs> really think, you foresaw this. Huh? I mean, I figured at some point they were going to do something stupid. I would find a way for us to sort of get away and like everything's working out great. So I feel like what we got to do is we can get to Waterdeep, find like the first empire having drug lord and then just offload this stuff. Because as far as I know, nobody in Waterdeep has ever gotten any of this particular restraint of Kush. Like it's going to blow their gourds. So you're saying we got to find a guy and we can be a sort of supplier. We can be the Colombians in this sort of equation, if we were to kind of match it up with the uh, U.S. 
and South America drug trade. Is that what you're yes, saying? Yes. We could be the like supply. those guys that kill we'll Scarface at the end of Scarface. <laughs> That's right. Because if there's any moral I got from Scarface, it's that being doing drugs is fine so long as you're the other guys and not, not Scarface. Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Scarface. I got. From. Don't be Scarface. Yeah. The whole movie is a warning about how you shouldn't be Scarface because he dies. But you know who doesn't die? The guys that kill Scarface. The guys that kill Scarface. <laughs> yeah. His little friend. <laughs> <laughs> and then they found the city of like Miami. I'm a little hazy on the details yeah. of that movie. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like I got the basic theme of it. But like, yeah, yeah do you like that plan? I dig it. Do you have any connections, any leads in terms of who we might go, or do we just kind of start driving around and digging around some I feel of the like shady corners? And use our natural like criminal aptitude to sort of see what's what. Because like I'm a kid, I don't know if they'll trust me. I feel like maybe you can like get in there and just sort of start talking to people, just using your natural like band leader charisma kind of stuff. We can sort of <laughs> suss it out. We can feel it out. All right. Hey, how far? Hey, you know the lay of this land a little bit better. How far away were we from Waterdeep right now? Oh, we're right here. It's right around this corner. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony has no other content planned until we get to the thing. You guys so got there real fast. We get there pretty much whenever. Wow, look at that. We, um, and there it is. Hey. The glittering lights of Waterdeep. And yeah. So Waterdeep is... Uh, I guess uh, it'd be morning now, right? Wouldn't it? Yeah, it's morning. So the morning sun crests over the docks of Waterdeep, which is where uh, the city gets its name from. This is mainly a, a port city, and you can see a lot of very haggard-looking people, a lot of smugglers, a lot of uh, ship shippers, people that just work in shipping, sailors. That's what you call <laughs> and them. Fan fiction. And fan fiction. fiction writers. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> fan fiction trade in Waterdeep. <laughs> you two show up in Waterdeep. Meanwhile, back at the camp at the Battle of the Bands between the Red Brands and the Water Mice, the entire crowd is embracing each other, crying. They're so happy. People are throwing flowers at Ron Stampler. Um, Drug flowers? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I get, if you want to use the, as drugs, you can. But they're just so enamored with your performance. I feel like people would be, like, trying to chant his name but not know what it is. <laughs> what's your name? <laughs> what's your name? That's what they, they go, what's your name? What's your name? What do you tell them? Wait, hi. <laughs> they go, hi, 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 hi. I'm Ron. Oh, Ron. Okay, so they start. They start hi, <laughs> I'm Ron. Hi, I'm Ron. Hi, I'm Ron. Hi, I'm Ron. The entire stadium starts you, chanting. Do you hear that, Henry? They're chanting my name. They sure are, buddy. Wait, you really, really hit it out of the park there. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, I got these pipes, and now they all want them. Yeah, the, the whole world- They want these pipes. They want your pipes. It's really exciting. I am a little worried that we were supposed to, to lose, as happy as I am, that this performance was so good. And if my eyes didn't mistake me, I feel like I saw our good buddy Glenn and his son Nick hightail it out of here in quite a jiffy. My cell phone is in the minivan- the books we need to return, or we die are in the minivan. <laughs> Our library what books. Are we? Who cares? That was a beautiful silent night. I don't want to take anything away from you, Ron. It was a beautiful silent night. But one of our dads just took the minivan. Daryl, Daryl, just, okay, just real quick. I want to tell Daryl about some breathing exercises. Oh, go ahead. I learned about on a nature wilderness retreat. Uh, okay. When I'm feeling a little flustered, what I like to do is just like a deep breath in. And then you just go. You're a bear, Daryl. You're a bear. Don't oh, okay, yeah, right. you can throw that in there too. Um, anyway, <laughs> let's uh, do this. All Henry, right, I can't believe you thought that we were supposed to lose. I with, with pipes ordained by the heavens. I these <laughs> pipes, I could never lose. I I wish you had but told us that before sampler, we did this. Sampler pipes, full heart can't lose. It's not. It's not Ron's <laughs> fault. It's not Ron's fault. It's it's my fault. I should have known. There's literally no way not to do Silent Night perfectly. It is just the most beautiful song in the world. That's true. I shouldn't have chosen it. You know, I think the main... It's not the song, it's the pipes. <laughs> MPAA sort of butts into your conversation and goes, it's definitely the pipes. <laughs> that song, it's fine, but you, you kid, you've got a career in this, he says, pointing at Ron. What say you stick with me and we take the show on the road? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've already had one dad abandon the party today. Uh, we're sort of already a unit. And I thought you were- You should all come. You guys seem great. My plan is we just kill half of these water mice and then you guys join me as my lieutenants. You could be, you could be rule the, the red brands with me. I was just wondering if a lieutenant is a promotion. Oh, absolutely. As you see, I'm a businessman myself. And so I'm looking for some sort of um, business. Your business seems to be pleasure. And that is something that we are in dire need of. You want my pleasure. Your voice gives pleasure to all these people. You've brought us all together. It's going to be really depressing when we kill about half of them. <laughs> I, I, so I, I have a question about that. Yes, Hi, absolutely. Henry Oak. Hello. Um, nice to meet you. So uh, about the pleasure, it does feel like killing a lot of people is like, it's not like a very pleasurable thing to do. Oh, no. Yeah, it's just a necessity. We don't have enough food to house all the water mice. Oh, it's like using the fax machine. You just got to do it, but it's not pleasurable. Sure, that <laughs> thing you said. 
Um, and in the in the back, you hear the other uh, musicians that you tied up weeping to themselves because they've also lost their gigs because uh. they lost their gigs because you were so good. They will never get their jobs back. And they're like, this works for us in a way that we never could have presumed. Yeah, this, we are so utterly is, humiated. That bass so player utterly, is so he's, into he's, this. He, he's turgid. Sir, a- a- MPA, what do you say on the road? Do you, do you have some sort of vehicle? Uh, we, we got horses. Yeah. Okay. Dad huddle. Okay, dad huddle. Sorry, we're we're well, we're dads. Second. We're just gonna do a quick dad huddle. We gotta discuss. Is that the name here. of your band? The yeah, yeah. band's called Dads. We're dad huddle. Dad we're dad huddle. huddle. Great. So good, guys. We need to get that minivan asap. So yeah, let's take a ten thousand foot view for a second here. We are. I, I don't like heights. Okay, we'll we'll take a ground level view okay. and then we're looking down onto the thing, but it's okay. below ground. Do you okay. know what I mean? Yes. So we're at normal level and it's lower. Is okay. that still a problem? Oh, it's like the Hollywood Bowl. Yes. I could, I could be playing the Hollywood Bowl. Okay, focus these, though. I, okay, I'm focused. Okay, so they left. We don't know where they went. They have our van. We're trying to get our kids. We definitely need to find that minivan. I feel like that's probably our best shot at still rounding everybody up. Yeah, and minivans are, it's gotta be a pretty easy track like there's not a lot of tracks that look like a minivan well, what if i become world famous <laughs> and you guys do your thing and then terry <laughs> jr is so impressed because i'm world famous that he finds himself that's a good idea ron really let's quick can we have a real idea well let's come up with a couple of let's ideas. do a quick real dad huddle do you mind ron Whoa. just a quick oh. real dad huddle okay we'll do yeah, it we'll, okay. we'll do it hey, um okay. so so you, you see elizabeth skills mcstuffins about to join your huddle and then you say that and he turns oh, right Lizzie back boy, around get over here lizzie boy the 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 status of your children, you, they're still your real kids. They're okay. always in your heart. All right, okay. come over here. I, stepdads are real dads. It's just more of like a... Okay, it's then just I'm a, back in the huddle. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, hi, Rod. Welcome Lizard to the Boy's just dad. hugging everybody. He's like, I'm so glad we feel so much closer as a group now because yep. of that song. Okay. Welcome to the real dad huddle, Ron. You are a real dad. I'm sorry. I, I That's what I meant. I just meant, I just want to reconfirm that we're all real dads. Um, I think it's a very good idea that Ron is going to become world famous as long as we uh, we should play where Glenn is playing. I think if you want to play and if you want to be world famous, we got to make sure we don't die first. So we should get the... That seems like a band problem and not a solo artist problem. <laughs> But I got to admit, you guys have helped me out of some sticky situations, and it's it's only fair that I use my new world fame to give you an autograph or two and send you on your way. And, I mean, we'll hang out. We'll do a meet and greet. <laughs> That's a good idea. Ron, I will say that playing drums with your rendition of Silent Night was a high point of my life. I'm trying not to let it go to my head, but I it already feel is. like uh, everybody has just witnessed something downright religious. Ron? Yes? I, and I put on my <laughs> I put on my serious Henry voice, like when Lark and Sparrow are being even more horrible than usual, and like it's time to turn it up to like four from a three. I go, Ron, yeah. we let you into the real dad huddle because we see you as a real dad. You asked me if my dad dar went off when I saw you and it goes off like crazy, but you know what being a dad is about? It's about putting your children first and it's about responsibility. And if you want to be a real dad to Terry, I'm sorry, mister, but you're going to have to put your rock and roll career on hold for just a second so that we can go find your son. Cause if you really want to impress Terry jr, you're going to show him that you love him by helping us find him. Ron turns back to the <laughs> crowd who's screaming, Hi, Ron. And start shouting and said, Terry, Terry, Terry. <laughs> they Henry. start chanting along with you, not quite knowing why they're doing it. <laughs> Ron, that's a great idea. Maybe you've inspired this crowd so much, they can go look for your son. They can cast a wide net. Well, what if they find... Oh, no, yeah. They, there's only one son to find. Oh, I mean, I guess all our sons. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta find all of our sons. Yeah. But well, um, Lizard Boy Scales Big Stephen says, well, you, you know, uh, Terry Jr. was in Rockport, right? You guys told me that. That's the, you know where he is. That's true. We do know he's in Rockport. Mr. MPA, we are so excited for this, for this chance to do a great band, right? We're going to have a great band. Here's a problem. You saw that minivan, that, that, that metal beast that drove away. Yeah. The behemoth thing. Yeah. We have like 40 songs that are even better than that song, what? but they're all inside that minivan. So we got to go get it. When that, that rogue guy's trying to start his own band with all that great music. We got to go get it. <laughs> Our demo tapes, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Our master recordings. So if you could help us, we could go get that. But we got to go now, and you probably won't have time to kill everyone. Yeah. Really? But I really want to Well, what do you want more, mister? You know, this is just like with my boys. I give them a choice. 
if you want to kill everybody, you can do that. But if you want to start a great rock and roll band that's going to change the world, then we don't have time to do both. All right, either one of you roll persuasion with advantage. I got an 18. He says, you know what? For today, art takes precedence over survival. You're right. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. He points to a lackey of his and he goes, "Fetch our fastest horses. We're going to Waterdeep." All right, now we're gonna cut back to Waterdeep. All of Waterdeep is kind of a dockside district. It feels like everywhere you look, there is something a little bit shady, a little bit back alley. I'm gonna look for a good dockside bar. A bar. Okay. Well, there is. Thanks to one of our Patreon subscribers. There is a sports pub chain named Bullywogs. <laughs> wait, wait, a chain. <laughs> wait, a chain? I love that as a chain. Oh yeah, it's gosh. a chain. You can tell that because above the neon sign, it just says like Waterdeep's brand new Bullywogs. <laughs> Great uh, that was from Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Thank ben. you, Ben. What sports do they do at this sports bar? <laughs> Well, probably all the usuals, right? How do they watch them? Is there like a portal that they scry through or no, something? They play, like, they play sports in there. Like, you know, they got well, like dog fighting. Do I know it was tough, but it's a forgotten realm. So it's like, you know, they got stuff I like that I have to going. assume that they, in addition to the usual sort of sports bar stuff, i.e., you know, cockfights and like, you know, uh, underground fight clubs, like their version of UFC. What would UFC stand for? Mm. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, foster children. Oh, no. Unfortunate oh, foster children. Oh, no. Why did you make it so dark? <laughs> That's what it is now. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate oh, no. foster children fighting to the death for oh, your amusement. Oh, UFC. No. It's a tough world out there. <laughs> Hey, man, this is a grim, dark reality. <laughs> In addition to that, I feel like they got wizards, like, making portals to, like, the equivalent of soccer games. I mean, games. do you want to go? Do you want to go in? Yeah, of course, man. This okay. is, it's a bully walk. This seems like a good friendly <laughs> establishment. Probably got a good spinach cheese dip. <laughs> so uh, you you kick open the uh, the Western-style doors to the bully walks, and you see it, it is a large and uh, very well-lit bar, a surprisingly well-lit bar. You kind of wish it wasn't because there is every fluid imaginable on the floor. It is a, it is a You're basically playing hopscotch to get around. Wet clean. bar, baby. Foster um, child tears, foster <laughs> child blood. Oh, yeah. God. And in the center of the bar, it's almost like a theater in the round type thing. In the center, there is a uh, sort of a stage or a, uh, no, what's the word I'm looking for? Wrestling a ring. Pit? A ring. A, an the, octagon. The, there's an octagon in the center of the, uh, the can bar. It be a, can it be a 20 sided ring? Oh, because that's good. Yeah, it, is a, it is a 20 sided <laughs> ring. Uh, and inside, you see a battle royale of five very small children, <laughs> all of whom have wands and cloaks, and they are just like <laughs> fucking pointing their wands at each other, and explosions are coming out. A guy like summons just green tendrils of light out of his mouth, and they come and like encircle somebody and slam him down three times. Orphans are getting wheeled out in wheelbarrows, all bloody and stuff. And a cleric who is also an orphan is like touching them and healing them, and being like, "Get back in there!" And they go you back. You gotta in. cut me, Mick. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I, it fi is I find the guy running this. I'm like, "Hey, what's the spread on the kid on the?" <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes uh, the long shot is definitely Payton. Basically, he's never been able to throw a single punch without knocking himself out. He's got the worst name of anybody I've ever seen. He rolls nothing but ones, as we say in the biz. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean in the biz? <laughs> In the biz, basically, it's a move and a fight. You want to do a lot of ducking and rolling, a lot of dodging to keep your stamina in a good place while you're evading all these dodges. Very Dark Souls. It's very Dark Souls. We, that's, yeah. <laughs> dark Souls is also our second place It's a fighting fighter. style. Yeah, it's, it's a, a fighting, fighting style. style. Yeah. You, know, like, you have Brazilian jiu-jitsu. They, they have chicken wings at Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> They're our rival uh, uh, bar. Um, <laughs> dark Souls is bullshit. Don't go there. I basically just sound like Bargy from Mission to Zix. Um, <laughs> But no, yeah, uh, Peyton, uh, when he rolls, he rolls right on his head every time, concusses himself. We call that rolling on the one. If you roll and get on your feet, that's a 20 <laughs> because the skill level goes from zero to 20, <laughs> one to 20. That's how we rank our dude. Are you done asking dumb questions now? <laughs> <laughs> All right. But the uh, the real bad boy, the real one that's going to destroy everybody, it, it, basically anytime he steps in the ring, that's Gunna Duckworth. <laughs> Gunner Duckworth. Gunner Duckworth. Again, uh, uh, a suggestion from Samuel Trossel. Thank you, Samuel oh Trossel. My gosh. So we got Payton. We got Payton is the long shot. That's the 100 to 1. And Gunner Duckworth is basically one to one. Nobody, everybody's scared to bet on him. You just get your money back. How old is Gunner? Gunner, he's a he's a he's a heaping thirteen years old. <laughs> he's just a, he's at the top of his weight class. He's like he's oh, the man. heaviest lightweight you've ever seen. And Payton. Payton is is eight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. I'd like to do a perception check on Payton. Okay, go ahead. I got an 18. 
All right. You can see uh, that Peyton... Uh, see a fire in his eyes. Peyton you know has I mean? a fire in his eyes. He fights with the vigor of somebody who's trying to get back at someone who has long since died. Yeah, he has I'm, all I'm, this oh vengeance and nowhere to put it. Uh, this is my perception for to see if he has the eye of the tiger. He definitely has the eye of the... <laughs> he, has, he has the eye of the tiger and the limbs of a tiger's meal. Like, <laughs> he, is, he is utterly helpless in the ring. He kind of just flops around. Now, I have... If I recall, I believe I have three gold on me still. You do. I'm going to put all three on Peyton. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> hundred to one odds. Okay, I hate Glenn right now. I hate that. I hate that Glenn's just betting on <laughs> on children fighting. Well, no, no, the cleric. We look. We turned the went wrong way for one second. <laughs> well, no, no. Let me let me explain. Glenn is betting on child fights for <laughs> well, sport. Clear. You don't have to justify and dealing Glenn's... drugs with his thirteen year old son. Let me be clear. You don't have to justify your shitty character. No, 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 two things. Two, <laughs> <laughs> two things. You I want to be clear about. You. Number one. When he first walked in one, this is a reputable chain establishment, right? <laughs> and when in Rome, when in Rome, do as Romans do, bet on kid fights. And then two, he, there's a cleric. And, there's a cleric healing up the kids. <laughs> Dungeons and Daddies, not a situational morality podcast. <laughs> you, got, you got three gold got down. three gold on Payton, baby. On Payton. Okay. Tonight's main event, incidentally, is a one-on-one between yeah. Payton and Gunnar Duckworth. So you are going to get your money's worth. Hey, Let me tell here you. we go. Well, I assume we're going to get that set up. And I think me and Nick are going to go over to the bar. All Nick, right. you wanna you wanna get in there? Do you do you want me to? Do, uh, no, do I, I want to fight in there? I don't know. Just you. Uh, if you want to, I mean, that'd be cool if you want. I'm just, it's up to you, man. I mean, I wasn't thinking about it, but now that you're mentioning it, I kind of feel like I should. I mean, you took like. I mean, we. <laughs> I'm good with knives. I told you I'm good with knives, but I like, like. I mean, would it I impress remember... you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> would you think it was cool? If it would impress you, I feel like I want to do it. I just, no, no, no. I'm just, it's up to you, man. I hey, just remember. Hey, hey, hey. And he goes over to the coach. He goes, he goes, put me in there. And the, and the, the book, he goes, sounds like a triple threat to me. All right, get in there, kid. Does Peyton come out? No, no. He goes, it's a triple threat. So now it's all three of them. Uh, so you now bet money technically against your son. <laughs> 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 I'll withdraw my bet and bet on my son. Okay, because I've seen him because he's a black belt in like mall. You can just Taekwondo. withdraw your bet at a Bollywogs. Well, you, you can move the bet. It hasn't move started a bet. yet. It hasn't okay. started yet, Matt. Come on. All right. So you've you know what's funny is that Sorry, Matt hasn't bet on a lot of child battles before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's okay. So here's okay. So so just to just to take a second here, I want to talk to Nick and like, hey Nick. Yeah. You feel you feel good. You want? I mean, listen, man. It's not gonna. I just think it's. I mean, I think you. Fucking! I've seen you do Taekwondo, man. You're pretty rad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel, when you when you say that, it fills me with a lot of confidence. I feel like I can do this. How far did you get in Taekwondo? I kind of lost track of that. The greenish, like it wasn't that far, but I feel like I got the general gist of it. Even, I just kind of. Do you get the breaking boards? Yeah, I mean, but it was those plastic ones that you just sort of put back together. It's the so same I forgot thing. them. Yeah, no, it's I, like four. Yeah, I, I, I broke. I broke some boards in my time, Dad. All right. These hey. guys are basically just a couple big walking boards. Hey, what's a hey, Sir, the uh, the croupier, the guy who's running the fights. Yeah, the what's the guy's name? His name is. So this one's from Kathleen McRae, Patreon subscriber, and he says, "My name is Scaro McCracken." Scaro <laughs> McCracken. It's a fucking good name. Yep. I'm very glad that we opened up yeah. uh, names. Because they're way better than my course. dumbass name. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you caught me off guard and I said Speaker Travis? Yep. <laughs> those those <laughs> days are long behind babe. us. But I, I wish Boreanaz would come back. Yeah. <laughs> He's out there. Whenever still. you want, to, you can always go back to Neverwinter. He's there waiting for you. Hey, uh, S- hey, McCracks. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> you got cleric here healing up the kids. We do. I, I look over at Freddie Wong in real life, looks over at Matt and says, see, it's fine. He's got a cleric. He's like, you don't need to justify your character. You, you do it has you. been several hours since we have had a kid death. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new record. <laughs> hey, you'll heal him up. He'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Just so anybody knows, if you don't understand the way a triple threat match works generally within professional, unfortunate foster children, um, <laughs> It means that the first person to defeat another by pinfall or submission, regardless of who that person is, wins. So he doesn't necessarily have to defeat Gunner. He could defeat Peyton, but you know. It's not to the death? Like it's not a battle to the death? No, it's a, it's a pinfall it thing. It would not be a sustainable franchise, <laughs> yeah. Will, if every time... Do you think UFC, everyone dies, Will, at the end of yes, it? This is a blood sport. Let me t- let me we tell just you. came from a town where there's a pit of people fucking next to a pit of people murdering each other. I don't feel like it's that far if out you of want there. To see, these are kids. If you want to see death sport, then you go to fucking Dark Souls. That is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that kind of thing here yeah. at Bullywogs. Yeah, I mean, look, I could grok from the light of the place. Yeah, it's well lit. Well We're lit. family established. A family. <laughs> I, I want to look around. Like, is this families? There's families in there here. There's a lot right? of families here. There's a lot of families in here. Will clear. Like that's why they're I was... enjoying the chicken fingers, which are literal in this in this world. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Okay, so that's the rules of the fight. I want to talk to Nick, and I want to talk some strategy here. Hey, Nick. All right. So the trick is, you just got to take out one of them. Peyton. Peyton's got the eye of the tiger. He does. I think you got to steer clear of Peyton. Steer clear of Peyton? He has the eye of the tiger. Yeah, but he has the body of not a tiger. What do you want? Like, (laughs) you want me to go after the strong one? He's like, he's like, he's my age, but seemingly twice my size. Hmm. Good point. But the problem is, if the strong one tires himself out on Payton, he'll still win, <laughs> according to the rules of a triple threat. Okay. Nick, what do you think your strengths are as a fighter? Drumming. <laughs> okay, striking? <laughs> yeah, I can hit them like they're, they're the snares. I can uh, stab them. I'm good at stabbing, I think. Okay. I mean, I've, stab- I've only stabbed dummies. I've never actually like stabbed a person. Uh, great personality. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 That is the end of my list. Okay. Give me one second here. I'm going to go find Payton's corner. <laughs> okay. Just hang tight. I'm going to get a Bevo. Okay. Just hang tight. You know, just like do some, do your stretches. You stretch. Do your stretches. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I love stretching. Ugh. All right. So you go find Payton, who is just alone sitting on a chair, like drinking a soda. And he goes, what do you want? <laughs> I'm going to save Payton. That's the only thing I care about now. <laughs> this, this one, Payton has joined the party. <laughs> yeah, yes. is- I'd also like to apologize, uh, Payton, for making this the character that I, <laughs> that I fixed your name to. That was great. Listen, we say on the submission form that Daddy Master has sole discretion in terms of the use of your submissions. Okay. Hey, Payton. Um... <laughs> What's it going to take for you to throw the fight, my man? Oh, my God. Do you realize how long I've been waiting somebody to offer me to throw a fight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Eddie, what are, you, what are you offering? You know, I'm putting together a little bit of an enterprise. <laughs> a little bit of a gang, so to speak. In my head, by the way, I'm so getting all of our twist vibes here. <laughs> what was the guy's name? Fagan. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to I'm putting together a gang here, and I noticed uh, you got the eye of the tiger, my man. Oh, Thank you. Know, you. You know what that means? I don't. <laughs> but you said it in a quiet voice, which means that it must be a compliment. Yeah. You got the eye of the tiger. You're just what my organization needs. All right. All right. Looks like you're kind of having a hard scrabbled life here. You know, it looks like what? Not quite sure what your next meal is. The pay fighting, is not great. Fighting just to survive every day. A battle. I do like the everyday battle part, though. That is sort of why we can, st- we can still keep that, but that <laughs> okay. can add a little comfort. You know, put a roof over your head, put a sunroof over your head. Okay. How about this, buddy? You let uh, that kid over there. I, I glance over at Nick. You let him pin you right at the beginning of the fight here. Uh huh. You join our crew, and uh, I'll show you. And we'll make some real moolah around here. How's that? Well, it's not going to do a lot for my reputation. You can you can roll persuasion. I'm gonna roll persuasion on this. Uh, that's a 10 plus 7, 17. You have a s- plus 7 to persuasion? I'm a persuasive guy. That's the rock star persona. Wait, how do you have God. plus 7 to persuasion? I spec all charisma. Like, I'm a dumb idiot who has a lot of charisma. That's, I mean, all right. And and just as was your dream when you spec that way, you have now convinced an 8-year-old <laughs> <laughs> to take a fall for you in blood sport. And enter your van. Yeah. Jeez. He goes, yeah, not a problem. All in, right, in hold the, my hand out for a little fist bump. In the fifth, my ass goes down. Uh, no, no, in, in the first f- five seconds. Yeah, in the first fifth of a second, my ass will go down. <laughs> Payton, I think you and I are going to get along. I hold my hand up for a fist bump. He puts his hand completely over your fist. <laughs> I still got to work on and that. And he goes, I, I don't like to fight before a fight. Put it away. Oh. <laughs> I gotta, what a pro. I got to keep the pythons nice and ready. <laughs> <laughs> Payton is my new favorite yeah, character. I love Payton. Okay. I'm going to go back to Nick and be like, Nick, here's the plan. Submission. Pin, hold, uh, go for the weak one. All right. Well, I was, oh, so I am going for Peyton. Yeah, yeah. Go for the weak one. I, I, took, I took a step back. I took a look at the uh, the fighting arena. Nick, you're going to go for the weak one. I, I feel a lot better about that. A lot okay. better. Just go what straight are, for a submission pin. Nick turns to Scar and McCracken and goes, what are the odds on me again? And he says, <laughs> well, it's like, how much you bench? <laughs> how much you bench? Yeah. He goes, show me, show me a feat. It's strength. And Nicholas uh, tries to do some like, cool kung fu moves. And he says... <laughs> The odds are five to one. I thought you said, show me your feet. (laughs) Yeah. Your feet of strength. Show me a feet of strength. I don't want to see your feet. That's what my memoir is going to be called. And it's going to be a picture of my feet. So it's five to one. If you want to keep your money on your boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep my money on my boy. Get your 15 gold. And also I lean back and I think, I'm like, you know. Henry's kids would really love this. (laughs) Oh, they would. Oh, I miss those boys. What a shame. (laughs) 
So you have now spent enough time here <laughs> not doing the thing that you said you were going to do when you came into town <laughs> that the doors bust open and you see MPAA, Lizard Boy Scales, McStuffins, and the remaining not you dads enter. So you guys see all of this just as Scar McCracken says, and fight! And Nick and Peyton and Gunner all start as going they, at as it. As they start to go into each other, I'm going to try, I'm going to lock <laughs> eyes with Gunner. Get your head out of the gutter, <laughs> Beth May. I'm so sorry. Please get that. So as the sorry. fight starts, I'm going to lock eyes with Gunner. Uh-huh. And just and and uh, and shout some insults at him. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and intimidate him. Hold on, let me see what my spells are. I'm gonna use my cantrip, vicious mockery. Oh shit! On this kid. <laughs> so you're yelling at a 13 year old. Yeah, you heard me. <laughs> okay. It I took 10 to... episodes, but now is official. Glenn Close is the worst. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have to roll for anything? What does that say? So, um, vicious mockery. I unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantment at a creature see within range. If the target can hear you, though not need to understand you, it must succeed on the wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on its attack roll it makes before the end of the next turn. Okay. What do you say? Hey, twerp. You probably couldn't. Couldn't bench shit, you idiot. Uh, <laughs> all right. Gunner looks at you and it like like raises an eyebrow. Yeah, and, that's what I'm talking to you. And you see him squint as if trying to make a wisdom saving throw. He goes, somehow that affects me. <laughs> Basically, his eyes dilate, his pupils dilate, and like fucking like ratatouille, you go inside his eye and you can see reflected back at you. The reason this kid probably fights is because it was the only way he could get respect out of anybody because he's not that smart. Nobody ever really respected his oh, ability to be clever. Feels so bad. And biggest he, bummer of a podcast. <laughs> now I'm so sad. I mean, blame Matt. He said he's the one who said he said <laughs> orphan fighting league or whatever. You're enabling him. I want to be clear. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's it's. I'm no one's more to blame than me. And he just sort of goes back to that mode, and he's he balls his fists up, but he's just fighting. Against his own demons, his own demons, his rather demons. than uh, anybody in the ring with him. I so. lean back, smile, and go perfect. So yeah, so he's got an opening for your son to pin uh, Payton, who immediately goes like, "Ugh," and falls over onto his back. So when we come in, yes, we're seeing all this. You're seeing all this happen. Okay, Daryl Wilson instantly looks and sees Glenn. His eyes track. He sees this ring of children fighting. I shouldn't have parked the van right outside. Huh? <laughs> no, they found I'm you assuming, very I'm easily. Assuming, yeah, Daryl Wilson runs and jumps into the ring and puts his hand out between the children. I'm like, Roll. No, I got we got a bet on this. Roll acrobatics to see if you can jump in without like falling <laughs> on your face. I rolled 14. Okay. So you you dive in from out of nowhere and boom, land right in front of both of them between all, actually all three of them, like right in the center of the triangle. And what do you do? I say, stop. What the hell is going on here? Why are there children fighting in the middle of this bar? Young boy, are you okay? Because Peyton fell down, right? Peyton's like, I'm no, I'm, I'm, it's terrible. Stand up, son. Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. I, I have my hand out to pick him up. And he tries to slap your hand away. I grab his hand. <laughs> Do a strength check with advantage because he's very to weak. An eight-year-old? Yeah, he's very, very weak. That's a 19. All right. He gets yanked up to his feet. And he goes, this wasn't the, pl this, who is this? <laughs> Don't worry, what you're safe. You're all right, son. You're safe. <laughs> and he, try, he tries to go, Ugh, and fall over onto his back again. And he motions at Nick to come in and pin him. And Nick's like, right. And Nick sprints for him and does a diving jump to try to get onto him. Do you do anything? Yeah, I try to grab Nick out of midair. <laughs> okay. Roll dexterity. Freaking Daryl killing my bet. Henry's just watching flabbergasted. I just want to say that <laughs> Henry got to the door. He was like, I should do something. And then Daryl dove. In and he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm want, just gonna see how I this want the greeter out. to be like, Come in your party. <laughs> Ron is like, Are those chicken fingers? <laughs> Welcome, Bullywugs. How may I seat you? I got a 14 on dexterity. Okay, he's gonna roll. All right, he rolled a little bit higher, so he manages to get on top of Payton and uh, Scaro McCracken from outside slams on the ring and goes, One for the first count of the one, two. Is anybody going to do anything for me? Oh. Three? Should I bet? <laughs> <laughs> Three! <laughs> and Dance, ding, come on! Ding, ding, ding. Nick stands up. McCracken holds up his hand, and Nick is victorious. Yeah! Yay, everybody's Cheers. super, super happy. Cheers are great. Very happy that the fight was not disqualified. Gunner heads off to, to fucking cry, and uh, <laughs> Peyton gets up, and he goes, great, cool. Comes down and heads over to, uh, to Glenn and goes, thanks for uh, convincing me to take a fall so I could join your crew. Is this the rest of your crew? All right. Henry snaps <laughs> and Henry looks at Glenn and says, Glenn, 
pardon my French, but what the freaking gosh darn heck are you? What, what is this? What have you done? That is it. You know, I, I try to be polite. I try to be non-judgmental about other, other dads' parenting styles, but you have to be, dare I say it, the worst father I have ever seen in my freaking life, sir. Uh, listen, man, I know this looks bad. Yeah, it looks bad. What is going on? How do you, how, what, what, what goes through your head, Glenn? Glenn, we're mad and disappointed. We're and Henry, Henry was being kind to you, sir, if I do say so. Guys, let's not make a scene here. Let's get a booth and uh, talk this over. Uh, hi, ma'am. I, I flagged down the waitress. Yes. Uh, we would like one booth, please, for our, how many people are, how many people eight, are sitting? Uh, eight, uh, for yeah. our eight-person party. You think you could squeeze us in? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. A lot of people laugh after that last fight. It was pretty disappointing for a lot of them, so. <laughs> so, yeah, she sits you down and, and hands you out menus. And Is says, it like one of those big circular booths? Yeah. All right, I circular. wind up awkwardly having to sit next to Glenn, who I just <laughs> said was, the, we're like in the middle of the booth together. Right. <laughs> See, celebrity gets you a lot. Got got us this booth. <laughs> Nick won. Everybody cheered because I'm I'm a big star now. That's you, you're you sure are, Ron. You sure are. Uh, we're talking. A- <laughs> I feel like Lizard Boy is like talking to the server and be like, "It's his birthday today. Can we get a cake? Can we get a cake in? Like, do you know who? Do you know who this is? This is Hi, I'm Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, look. I know that was mega unchill of me back there, and I know I ran off, but that was a bad situation you put us in. Ron, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, but you sang a Christmas song. That's like my thing. We were going to lose that battle of the bands. I had no choice. You condemned us to death back there. And listen, I know that the the, the water mice and the gang that Nick was running with were, were in trouble, but you always got to, you know... Look out for yourself. And the way I was seeing it, that situation was rolling around where we could not have won that battle of the bands. And myself and my son were, was in mortal danger. We had to get out of Dodge. And I know that you guys joined up with that band and looked like you guys were going to be fine. You, you were impersonating them. You could have slipped into the crowd. I know you're wily. I've seen you. Daryl and, and, and Henry and to a lesser extent, Ron, you, we've been through a lot of scrapes. And I felt like you guys could have handled it. But my priority, first and foremost, was looking out for my son and myself and our safety. And we had to get out of there. And yeah, maybe it could have been handled a little more elegantly, maybe a little more communication. I know that my therapist says I got to work on that. But we made it out. And for the most part, we seem to be okay here. So that was the biggest little bullshit I ever heard, Glenn. (laughs) I understand trying to take care of your kid, but we got kids too. We've been helping each other, Glenn. We don't know what's going to happen. And we got to return those books from the van. Otherwise, we're going to die. My problem, Glenn, is that you're clearly only thinking about yourself and your kid. We all got kids. We're all helping each other out. Who knows what could have happened? You could have lost the van. We lose books. We got to return those books or we might die. You weren't thinking about us at all. That's the problem, Glenn. We're a team, goddammit. When you leave the team, where, where, where do we find you? Huh? Where are we? You're betting on, on children? F- fighting? Are they fighting? Ma'am? Ma'am? Over here? Excuse me? Yeah. W- what sort of establishment is this? What, what sort of fights are these? Oh, this, this is orphan fights. <laughs> that is about 20 times worse than I thought it was. I thought this was like a special child fight, uh, okay. you know, maybe in the day. <clears throat> Sorry, it's, it's foster children, not orphans. I lied. I'm slightly wrong. Oh. That's okay. That's, I don't know if that's better I'll, or worse. It's the same. Did, did, you, did you want any appetizers or drinks? We'll take we'll it. I'll take. A spinach cheese dip. You got a spinach cheese dip? Absolutely. No, chicken no, wings. No, anything but spinach cheese dip then, ma'am. Round of chicken fingers coming up. Ch- All right, thank chicken you. All the things we got. Okay, uh, fellow dads, I'm going to jump in here okay. for just a second. And thanks for everyone else that's sitting at the table for, for sitting here. Lizard Boy Skills McStuffin, Peyton. Happy to be here. Happy to be Nick, here. Uh, Happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's not what I sound like. This is what I sound like. <laughs> There's a lot of emotions flying around right now. Uh, we just had a very intense situation. I would like to say that I apologize for flying off the handle back there. It was uh, justified, man. I get it. You know, I, here's what I'm going to say. I think we should all... I'm going to grab this. There's like a bone on the ground, like from, yeah, uh, just from a, like mis- a, a miscellaneous bone. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the feelings bone. And whoever's holding the feelings bone I gets to the talk. Bone. And <laughs> I roll the I, I'm instantly rolling. The, I'm yeah, instantly the grabbing sterility. the bone. And then uh, oppose it uh, well with your dexterity roll. That's going to be tough to oppose a natural 20. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my gosh. Henry doesn't even remember holding the bone. He just ha- brings it up and then it's in your hand. Suddenly. I hold it and I just stare at Henry. Okay. Mm. I'm holding the bone up <laughs> so you don't talk. I, d- mm. the bone, I have the bone. The bone. I have the bone. Okay. Ron Blimey. goes to a different sh- table and starts eating chicken fingers to get bones. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, what were you going to do here? 
You took my van. You left us all high and dry. What's your plan? I just want to also urge you guys to both use I feel statements. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like if Henry wanted to talk, he should get the bone. Glenn. (laughs) You guys can't see it, but Henry's frowning really hard right now. He cannot believe how south this went on him so quickly. Glenn, just what is the plan here? We're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. We've been through a lot, but here we are. We're in a bar of some sort where children are fighting, and you stole our van and left us high and dry. What's the deal? So I'm going to lie to my fellow dads. (laughs) Okay. Which I assume is going to be a role here. Yes. But I'm going to tell a fib, as it were. Look, uh, can I raise my hand. Oh, yes. yes. The, can I get Henry, the bone? Yes. Uh, the, the, just talk. I don't want to give you the give bone. Give me the bone. All right. Uh, Henry, bone. Okay. Henry, was, I was just going to say, uh, you need to give Glenn the bone for him to talk. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I give the bone to Glenn. <laughs> and, uh, Daryl's a man who plays by the rules. Thank you for letting me know that, Henry. Okay. I receive the bone. I stare. <laughs> God, Freddy's, Freddy's, Freddy and the bone go into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting with zingers. I wrap my hands around the bone. <laughs> and, I, and I say, look, the plan was get out of immediate danger because that battle of the bands was going south. And the only place logically that we knew we were all headed was water deep and to wait for you guys here. And we found a drinking hole and uh, we decided to come in and, and, and wait it out. And Nick jumps in and says, and what we were thinking was, sorry, can I have the bone? Oh, yeah. Um, Thank so, you. So can I hand the, is every bone? Yes, you yeah, can oh, hand the bone. bone. Yeah. You have the bone, you can hand it. So I feel that also our plan was to get a lot of money together so we could buy back the other kids from slavery. You don't have any money. How are you going to rescue kids that have can been we, sold into slavery? Can we start rolling some sense yes. motive checks here? Yes. Okay. So, uh, Friday, you're going to roll uh, persuasion, and the rest of you are going to roll insight. With advantage, because you are not really inclined to believe anything he's saying right now. All right, that's a 14 plus 7, 21. Jeez, nice. I swear to God, Daryl Wilson straight up rolled a natural 20 again. Oh, my God. Two in a row, plus one, so 21. Jesus Christ. Wow. Okay, so I got a 19. Oh, I wow. got a 19 plus three. <laughs> oh, damn. All right, no one is buying the bullshit from the close boys. Son, give me the bone. Are you going to be nice? No, I'm not. I'm going to talk some okay, real. I'm going to talk I, for I real. Ron, <laughs> bone. Ron walks realized- over with a plate of bones <laughs> and is like the Oprah of chicken finger bones. You get a bone and you get a bone. Ron, oh, Ron oh, can, okay, I have a, can I have a quick chicken finger? My blood sugar's a little low. They're just bones. Oh, okay. So everybody grabs a bone. <laughs> I grab a bone. Everybody I grab one of those bones. So as this happens, Scar McCracken slinks over the table and he goes, seems like you guys got a little uh, argument going on. You know how we usually solve these arguments here at Bullywogs. You want to step into the Icosagon? Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. What's your name, sir? My name is Skyro McCracken. Could you give us just one second? I will be here. <laughs> okay. And he steps back one step and then temples his hands together. <laughs> that man definitely wants us to fight, which, depending on what happens soon, may happen. Glenn, I just want you to think for one second. Henry's boys are missing. If I see my boy, as of right now, I'm going to have to eat his skin. And Ron doesn't know where her son is either. And we have found your son. And we put our lives on the line. We did everything we could to help him. And you guys seem to be okay. Ron and can't yet- help it that he has an angel's voice that has come down from on high. None of us knew that that was going to happen. No, and wait, Hen- oh, Ron knew it was going to happen. You knew Hen- it was going to happen. Henry, yes. I, have to, I have to be honest. I knew it was gonna happen. I, I, I knew, I knew nobody could compete with these, these gorgeous, gorgeous pipes of mine. Run. But then, but, but, but Henry, I have to, I have to ap- apologize, which is the first time I think I've ever done anything like that. But it's once I opened up these pipes and started singing "Silent Night," I knew that crowd was. Well, they were really proud of me. Lizard Boy Scales McSuffins puts his hand on your forearm and closes his eyes and is just like nodding. <laughs> and I thought that that was pretty fucking rad. It was, Ron. Okay. It was rock and roll. I just want you to know that I've done everything I can to try to keep it together. Okay? This is a team here. And I just want to say as a teammate, you let down your team, Glenn. And I'm worried about my son. I think we're all worried about our sons. And I just wish you had, uh, I just wish you had respected us a little bit more as a man. I, I, can I, I we, we all have bones. Fuck you it. all have bones. Okay. Go ahead, Henry. Talk. This is a safe space now. And thanks for teaching me that term, uh, Henry, safe space. I like it. Yeah. yeah you know, it's, good, it's, good, um, it's a good term. People use it a lot for a lot of different things. I like uh, it. It's gotten a little watered down in the culture lately, but I think it's I still don't has care value. about that part. Okay. It's, well, I kind of gesture to Scarl, like, hey, where's my fucking money? I got five to one on oh, that guy. Sorry. 
while that's going on, I'm telling Daryl about an article in the New Yorker that he should read <laughs> about uh, safe spaces when we get back to Earth. Um, Scar approaches and goes, ah, yes, yes, here, here's your 15 uh, coins. Did you bet on the child fight? <laughs> Correction. Out of earshot of Scar, I go, I ensured that we would have some money to move around here in the Forgotten Realms as I put the 15 on okay. the table. Okay, okay, Henry, just get it together, Henry. Just just breathe for a second. Sounds like a smart business decision. Thank you, Ron. I Here's what I'm suggesting. That's a I don't, Think about the return on investment, the ROI, I think, yeah? I'm still holding this bone like it means anything. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I, he's doing it in real life. It's like mimicking holding am, a bone. Will Campos is. It's great. I, I'm going to say this, fellow dads. Other than Ron singing, which was great, but Thank I got to admit, Ron, I am a little disappointed that you knew it was going to affect the plan poorly and you did it anyway. You're disappointed? You're not mad. You're, 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 you're disappointed? <laughs> I'm, 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 Ron, take a D12 of psychic damage. <laughs> You found, like, the most powerful insult. <laughs> you hear the voice of your father echoing oh, in your no! skull. Ron takes 10 damage. Whoa! <laughs> Henry realizes that he has triggered some issues for Ron, so Henry is going to cast Healing Word oh. on Ron, and he's going to say a Healing Word and say, it's okay. We all get disappointed sometimes, but I forgive you and we all love you. And then I cast healing word. Yeah, go ahead, Daryl waves to the waitress to get some more uh, chicken wings for Ron. <laughs> Ron mops his teary she, face with chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> well, she she comes she comes back and she says, "I'm I'm sorry, we are out of chicken wings. Oh, we no. do we have the spinach. You said specifically not the spinach. Not cheese, the spinach. That's all we Ron, have. I glare at Glenn. Uh, not the spinach. Ron heals for ten. Oh wow, well done. 10. Yeah, so you still feel a little sad, but you know, right back that's, where you were. No, hey, that's Ron. what okay. it is. Ron, what, <laughs> what do you uh, what do you uh, what do you, you want to eat there, Ron? What's, uh, let's take a look at the, me well, actually, what do you have? Spinach cheese dip. <laughs> I will take the chicken wings. Right, we're out of those. That's what I was just, I was just telling you that. Well, what do you have? Spinach cheese dip. Okay, I'm thinking, I don't know about you fellas, but I'm thinking chicken wings. Yeah. All right, you know what? I'll go look in the back. Can you yep, just thanks. check? Yep, no, I'll tables. go check it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you I'll know, check it. You know who, who he is, right? Nope. I'm, I mean, I'm getting a sense of it. <laughs> That's hi, I'm Ron. It's oh, me. I don't I don't know who that is. Hi, I'm Ron. Oh, great. Wonderful. You'll find out about it soon enough. He's going to be all the rage very soon. Gentlemen, here's what I'd like to say. <laughs> I think all of us goofed up in our separate ways in our last escapade. And so what I'd like to propose is a reset. And from this point forward, dads don't do other dads dirty. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but I was just to say... Henry, I see you're we sticking need, your bone in the middle there. Should I, we all stick our uh, bones Bones together? in the middle. Dads don't do other dads dirty. Can we all do that? Can we all put our bones in the middle and say dads don't do other Henry, dads I don't, dirty? I, 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 Peyton's like, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we'll say that, but... Not, not you, Peyton. It's important. Nope, when but. you look at the game tape, you don't just sit there and you say, eh, everybody on the team did a bad job. You look at what actually happened. I'll say this. That's a pile of bullshit. We did not do each other dirty. Glenn did us dirty. And all I'm asking is, Glenn... I would like you to apologize to the three of us and say that what you did was wrong, and then we will forgive you because that's what we do because we're a team. We will Ron, all make mistakes Ron at some point. Ron was strong enough to apologize, Glenn. Yes. And we're all very proud of Ron for that. Nick looks at you, and he grits his teeth, and he just shakes his head. <laughs> Don't do it, Dad. Don't you fucking do it, Dad. Not to these cucks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Dude, did we hear that? No, he's not saying it. Okay. <laughs> it's, like, it's, all, sort of, it's all in the eyes. <laughs> okay. Very expressive eyes. Yeah, Nick, yeah. No, it's, he's doing a lot of eyebrow work. He's like the rock. <laughs> Glenn, you got to apologize. No bones about it. Oh, the first dad joke of the episode. All right. Well, the kids are going to take a <laughs> automatic. <laughs> so you just did all together 11 damage to, to several children. Oh, my gosh. That's more damage than the whole fight. That's, yeah. That's yeah. the most bones without any David Boreanaz. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Glenn. You really boned it up. And then I hold up a bone. Eh. It was okay. No, yeah, it was good. Daddy Master said yeah, it, no, it counts. Good. It counts. It counts. Uh, Glenn, no chickening out on this apology. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yum. Just down to you now. <laughs> so we're directing that all at Glenn. Listen, guys, let me just wing it here real quick. <laughs> right, well, done. well done. Now you have to send it somewhere. Um, all that I think McCracken's heard all of this. Okay. Will he know we heard him? 
Uh, no, he'll just like get a splitting yeah, migraine. Yeah, fuck him. He runs a child yeah, battle yeah, yeah, yeah. ring. Right. The Kraken's getting the brunt so of he that. He gets one, two, three, four d4. Oh, shit. <laughs> we may kill a man here today with our. He falls joke. to the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh! His eyes roll back into his head, and he just boom and hits the ground. <laughs> oh what, god! Home. What happened? I think Glenn was about to say something. Glenn, guys, <sighs> and I give I give Nick a look like. This is what my eyes are saying, which is we're going to need these guys' help to get home. And at the very least, having a bunch of people at a table mad at you is bad band vibes. A lot of That's a lot of eyebrow work there. Uh, yeah. Freddie, we're going to need you to post a video of you communicating that with <laughs> eyebrow gestures on the Twitter or Ooh, that's something. That's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, guys, I agree. What we did back there, what I did to you guys, as you, Henry, put it, did you dirty? <sighs> it was whack. Let me at least say that I was doing it because I was fearing for my life and the life of my son. And I think any of you, when faced with that situation, would have done the same with your own kid. That aside, <laughs> that aside, I recognize that I did you all dirty. Daryl, I'm sorry I took your baby. I took your beast. I think you'll be wanting these back. Glenn's got that half-ass apology down from YouTubers and influencers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you were offended. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry you guys were offended. I'm going to slide the keys over. I grabbed them. Henry, thank you for mediating this. Again, I'm sorry about your kids. And Ron, I guess I forgive you for singing a Christmas song that good. Again, kind of my thing, but... And, and imperiling myself and the kid, but I know you didn't mean to. I'm, but he meant, did mean I to. I meant to. Oh, I meant right. to. Right, right, right. Wait, Glenn, are, is your apology to Ron to forgive him for something that he did? <laughs> <laughs> and and hold on, Daryl. <laughs> and I'm sorry I ditched out on you. I'm sorry you took my pipes so personally, but you know it's just my pipes. Good enough. <laughs> we'll dads take don't that. do dads dirty on three. One, two, three. Dads, dads don't, don't do, do dads other dads, dads dirty. dirty. Bullshit. And you see Nick standing up in his chair, and he points at all of you. You guys are a bunch of fucking hypocrites. You just want to control all this bullshit. You only like him because he helps you out fucking finding your stupid kids. And the second he finds his kid and wants to make his life a little bit better, you just want to shit all over it. Fuck you. Fuck you. <sighs> and his eyes roll oh, back into his head. And when they come back, the irises are purple, or the corneas are purple. And you hear the <laughs> voice that you the previously difference. heard coming out of Lark and Sparrow. <gasps> Nick turns and looks at Glenn, and he says, You cannot raise a child because you are a child. You will never understand what it takes to raise a life until you get one of your own. You whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. No, <laughs> I say of the bone. Hi, <laughs> hi, Daryl Wilson here. Nice to meet you. Are you the guy from the dream? Yes, I'm the same guy. What's your name, sir? I put my hand out. Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm not going to tell you my name. I'll figure it out soon enough. Why won't you tell us your name? Yeah, what are you afraid of, chump? I'm a slap Nick. Okay. Roll an attack. Two. All right. You try to slap him, and he just catches your hand, <laughs> and he goes, Good idea, Glenn. I'm... I try to slap Nick also. All right, go ahead and roll attack. That's a six. All right. He grabs your hand, too. Henry, he's got, he got two hands. Somebody right. So he just him. grabs both of your hands. And before anybody else can do anything, he just fucking like bam, bam from the Flintstones, just like throws you just with your wrist. And bam, you fall on the fucking ground hard, like far harder than any 13 year old should ever be able to throw somebody. Like what dice hard? Like d <laughs> if you were to like quantify how many dice hard that is. <laughs> you both take a D8 of damage. Whoa. And then he starts to levitate. Whoa! That's and he a says, new one. "You are not worthy of being fathers. You take your children for granted. You take yourselves for granted. You take the very act of fatherhood for granted. And if it takes every breath in my body and every bit of dark magic I can conjure, I will make sure that you regret the day you ever had children." Hey, uh, Daryl, isn't your kid's name Grant? <laughs> <laughs> and, he just, and he just goes, oh Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. And he begins to fade out of existence. And for a brief second, Nick's eyes go back from purple and he looks at Glenn and he goes, dad, dad, what did I do? Dad, I'm sorry. This is my fault somehow. I feel like I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't good, a good enough son. I fucked this up. I'm so sorry. When you get a chance, Nick, you stab. I'll keep that in mind, dad. <laughs> I've learned nothing. <laughs> and he fades out of existence. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson. Anthony Birch is our DM. Will Campos as Henry Oak. Beth May as Ron Stampler and myself. Freddie Wong as Glenn Close. Theme song and outro music is All Right by Maxton Waller. Additional backgrounds by Sword Coast Soundscapes. Thank you this week to Samuel Trossel, Peyton Bennett, Ben McDonald, and Kathleen McRae, Patreon supporters who submitted characters and location names that we use in this episode. You too can submit characters, locations, and items by becoming a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads where you'll join an entire army of dad enablers fine folks like benjamin seep sir tom lum and anna black who make the show possible supporters get access to exclusive bonus content like a companion commentary podcast called talking dad where we chat about the ongoing campaign and answer listener questions find us on twitter at dungeons and dads facebook at bit.ly slash dungeon dads subreddit at r slash dungeons and daddies and as always thank you to those of you out there tweeting about the show leaving itunes reviews and exposing your friends to our bad dad jokes by getting the show out there together we can end the stigma against dad jokes once and for all next episode coming at you june 17th so until then if it's sunny outside don't forget to apply sunscreen if it's cloudy outside don't forget to apply sunscreen there was a time when you could read between the lines you know they never brought you down never brought you down It's not going to do a lot for my reputation. Oh, but so you, baby, you won't need that. Guy. You can you can roll persuasion. I'm gonna roll persuasion on this, and thank God that Glenn. I don't is, like that you called him baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, may, I may cut that. <laughs> you can't cut it now. <laughs>